Well, praise the Lord. Good morning, good morning. This is a wonderful day when I look out that window. Beautiful blue sky. How are you today? Well, we're going to look at the presence of God with regards to what will the presence of God give you. God bless you, Beverly. Love you, my sis, and my precious Lizzie. Bless you, Lizzie. How will the presence of God affect your life? I think uh, when we look at these aspects this morning, it's going to bring a complete brand new perspective. You know, it's one thing to say to somebody, well, you need the presence of God. You need the presence of God. But what is the presence of God really? How is it going to benefit you as an individual? And that's what I want to focus on this morning. Now, uh, first of all, let me just say this to you. You are the carrier of God's presence. If you never thought like that, let me encourage you with this. The Bible says that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, which means God dwells on the inside of this body, which is the temple of the Holy Spirit. You, your body, somebody may say, well, well, I've got all these weaknesses in my body. Now get ready. Your weaknesses in your body was redeemed at Calvary. God's Son, Jesus Christ, exchanged His body. How? He took our body with all its mistakes and He nailed it to the cross. He was crucified for us and when He was raised from the dead, that means He was raised above the mistakes and the issues of the flesh. He ex uh, there was a major exchange at Calvary. We call it the divine exchange. Now your body is called the body of Christ. You are the body of Christ. Let's go to the next point. There's quite a few things I want to mention to you today. Now, uh, the Holy Spirit inside of you is the presence of God. The presence of God comes through the Holy Spirit. Somebody says, really, I just read my Bible and that's the presence of God. Yes, you will tap into the presence of God by reading the Word. But when you read the Word, you're actually reading the life of Jesus Christ. Because in the beginning is the Word and the Word is with God. And the word became flesh. That is Jesus Christ. So when you read the Bible, you are giving the Holy Spirit substance on the inside of you so that you activate the presence of God. Isn't that powerful? Now, the presence of God, please understand that, Carol, God bless you. Good to see you as well. Wonderful. The, uh, the presence of God gives you and I purpose in life. The more we read the scriptures, the more we discover, or shall I say we rediscover God's original intent for our lives. It's not just a matter of reading the Bible just to, because, well, I'm a Christian now. Read your Bible. Read your Bible. <laughs> Read my Bible every day. Huh? No, 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 no. Yeah, 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 yeah. There's much more. When you read the Bible, you are swimming like that fish inside of the waters which the fish was created out of. That's right. 
when you read your Bible, you are busy swimming inside the streams are, and the resources of God out of which you were created. Well, you know, if I just say that and I don't say anything else, that is powerful. So when we read the Bible, you actually go inside of all the potential of God's different streams. And one of those streams or two or more, however, is going to touch you. And we, I, Rasko, could all the way from South Africa, such a faithful young man. Those uh, uh, streams, when it touches you as you read the Bible, or you sit under the Word, it is going, you know, remember, we used to say that scripture jumped off the page right at me. You know why? Because you've just touched a powerful nerve, like we would say, that uh, that pertains to your life. That's right. Now, God's presence gives you purpose in life. Now, w w without the presence of God, we will have no real sense. Without the purpose of God, we will have no real sense of belonging to anything greater than where we are at at present. When you read the Word of God, or the presence of God, enables you to tap into something that is far greater than you. That gives us purpose for living. That gives us a recognition on the inside that there's more to life than where I am at. Think about what I've just said. That's why uh, Moses, Moses with the Israelites says, God, do not send us from this place to that place without your presence. If you do not go with us, we don't want to go anywhere. It is your presence that will distinguish us as a people of difference. Oh, it is so powerful. <laughs> so, with the presence of God, you feel worthwhile living no matter the challenges that you go through. Can you give him a praise? <laughs> Can you give him that praise offering so early in the morning? Or maybe it's in the afternoon or nighttime by you. Can you dare to give him a praise offering and say, Father, thank you. Thank you for your presence. I understand that your presence causes me to swim in all your resources when I read your word, out of which I was made. And when I read it, I'm going to stir up stuff in my life that will make me think and realize there's much more to me than where I am at. And that is what gives us more purpose to keep going. Amen? Now, with the presence of God, you feel worthwhile living. So often we meet, you know, in our 38 years or so of ministry. And the reason I say 38 years is because, you know, uh, I don't want to, if I just say uh, over the last two years, then folk may think it's only where we are at. So over all the years in ministry, we have seen, I have seen wonderful, great people. And then the question is, why am I living? Life is not worth living. Look what I'm going through. Now, with the presence of God, you will change that and you will begin to feel worth while living. 
no matter your challenges, you will feel worthwhile living with the presence of God. You aren't Robbie, God bless you, another prophet. You will feel worthwhile. But wait, there's much more. Because I'm going to give you some steps this morning just to whet your appetite. How do you know that the presence of God is with you? Now, let's just finish this. You have to cry out to Jesus, the Son of God. And the cry is, this is one example, allow the Lord, the Holy Spirit, who is the Lord, the Lord who is the Spirit, to reveal to you more. When Jesus was walking along the road, there was a blind man. Remember Bartimaeus? And he started to cry out, Son of the Most High, have mercy on me. You see, the presence of God was just walking by. And the presence of God might just be walking by you. And it's up to you to cry out and say, have mercy on me, God. God, pass me not by. And they try to silence blind Bartimaeus. You're making too much noise. What's wrong with you? Just just keep quiet. You're getting too radical. Uh, uh, you know, just, 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 just calm down. Pipe down. And he shouted the louder. His shout had an impact because inside of his words, there was a desperation propelling his words to go forth and not return void. Remember the Bible says in Isaiah 55, 11, so is my word that my words that goes out from my mouth, it shall not return void. A cry that is desperate, a cry that is filled with a compassion towards God's uh, 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 attributes, towards His mercy, a cry that goes out towards God, that God, inside of my cry, there is a surrender of knowing it's only you that can bring me through this. Nobody else can. Jesus stopped. The presence of God stopped. He says, bring him, bring him here. And at that moment, Bartimaeus cast off that coat of security that gave him security, that qualified him, that he could sit there. It was like an, a license. I can receive money since I'm blind. When the presence, when you enter into the presence of God, or when the presence of God reaches out towards you, there may be some stuff you have to take off your life. Moses, when that bush was burning, had to take off his sandals. It was holy ground he stood on. But it was just ordinary ground where maybe he walked past every day. Who knows? A bush and, you know, dust and sand and what have you. Oh, when the presence of God comes in a place, the presence of God will cause that atmosphere to become holier and sanctified for him to manifest his goods. Listen to this very cautiously. You have to cry out to Jesus, the Son of God. When last have you been perhaps on your knees, on your face, standing in his presence with a cry that is so desperate that the tears were just rolling down your face. That the tears just roll down your face. 
and you say it, and you said, God, I am so desperate. Unless you come through for me, I am done. When last have you cried out and said, God, unless you show up, there is nothing. That's a kind of cry that God's presence will be attracted to. You see, the presence of God stood still. When blind Bartimaeus cried out, did the disciples try to silence him? But if we keep silent, stones will cry out and start worshiping him. And I don't want no stone to do my job. Now get ready. A cry from the heart. Please hear what I'm saying. A cry from the heart is a cry that is filled with a hunger towards God's presence. How hungry are you really for God to show up? And when God shows up, what are you going to do with his presence? Very important. Very important. Now I'm just going to give you a few ways here. I'm just going to give you a few ways Please build on this, and then I'm going to close. How you can get closer to God. Become quiet. Become quiet. Just sit. Meditate. Think about God. Think about these things. Number two. And listen, I just label them number one and two, but it doesn't have to be a number two. It could be a number one. When you read your Bible, that's the only book that will read your life. You can read many storybooks, but when you read the Bible, the words of God will read you. You're swimming inside of all these resources and something will touch you and something will jump off that page and something will be like, wow, this is really Staying with me. That's the presence of God. Another way is that you can actually write out some of your prayers. And then you can read through it. You know, I've got like uh, some of the authors, even, well, I don't want to mention any names. Great names of, uh, when I say great names, God makes our names great of their prayers I will read and how they functioned, how they expressed themselves. It is so important. And then you learn. Write out your prayers and check and see which ones are outstanding. Go for a walk and talk with God. Enoch. Enoch. I said, Enoch. He walked and he talked with God. Oh, somebody says, but then I'm not going to be anymore. He's, he's just going to take me. He will take you when it's time. <laughs> walk and talk with God. When you walk, uh, begin to elaborate on God's creation. Talk to him. Oh, the trees are so beautiful, blooming. And, and uh, God, you just created such beauty. Look at those flowers, God. And to think you clothe those flowers with different colors and nobody comes with a coloring pencil to color them in. Your creative power, you are so full of color. Put on some worship music. I've got one more. Put on some worship music. And just saturate in his presence. Think about the words. Think about the song. And surrender inside of you everything, your spirit, soul, and body. In getting into the realm 
of absolutely worshiping him. There's nothing between you and him, not even a schedule at that moment. Lastly, and we close. Marvel at the world God has created. God, this is so fantastic. You created the moon by night, by day the sun, by night the stars. I'm just giving you an example. My Father, you are so creative. All this water in the sea, you, you've got boundaries holding that water back. What an awesome creator you are. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. Thank you for tuning in today. And I'm asking you humbly, go to my, yes, YouTube, you heard right. Look for Dr. Dr. Andres Van Skalkway and subscribe. God bless you. Embrace these things. Maybe listen again and again to this teaching and saturate yourself. And remember, there's more for you than against you. God is for you. Until next time, Jesus is Lord. Go and love somebody. Call somebody. God bless you, Latris. I just saw him there. Merry Christmas to you as well and your precious wife. That's the man God used in Texas to teach me a lot about the media. Precious man of God and his wife. All right, God bless you. We love you. And remember, God loves you so much that he has sent his son, Jesus Christ, to lay down his life for you and me so we could have life. Until next time, bye now.